Ladies and gentlemen, ghouls and ghosts, welcome to another spine-chilling episode of Scream Creeps. I'm your host, Jeremy, and again, I have my brothers Aaron and Josh with me tonight. And today we're going to delve deep into the depths of horror cinema to unravel the mysteries behind one of the most iconic and terrifying films of all time. That's right, buckle up, because we're about to take a deep dive into the supernatural abyss of The Exorcist. But before we summon the demons, let me remind you that Scream Creeps is not for the faint of heart. If you're easily spooked or prone to night terrors, consider yourself warned. Now let's get to the meat of our ghastly feast, The Exorcist, the 17th scariest movie according to science in the year 2020. Released in 1973 and directed by William Friedkin, The Exorcist has been haunting the dreams of moviegoers for decades. It's not just a film, it's an experience that leaves an indelible mark on anyone brave enough to venture into its demonic narrative. As we journey through this haunted tale, we'll explore the spine-chilling performances, the eerie cinematography, and the cultural impact that continues to send shivers down our spines. And remember, dear listeners, we want to hear from you. Share your thoughts on The Exorcist by reaching out to us on social media using hashtag Scream Creeps. But first, I want to take a moment to appreciate the science behind this ranking. Uh, We haven't really done this before, and we really don't understand the studies too much, but we want to talk about how this movie earned the prestigious title of the 17th scariest movie according to science. Um, as we've stated before, the mean, uh, resting heart rate, uh, for these films, uh, is 65 beats per minute. If you guys have listened to our podcast previously, um, the exorcist, the average movie heart rate for this film was 77 beats per minute. So it was one beat per minute higher. If you guys listened to our previous podcast for the movie hush, however, the highest spike for the beats per minute was 92. So that was six beats per minute higher than that movie was. Um, so the overall difference being a, a difference of 12 beats per minute. With that being said, I want you guys to grab your crucifix, sprinkle some holy water, and join me and Aaron and Josh as we descend into the nightmarish world of the exorcist. Welcome to Scream Creeps, where nightmares come to life. All right, I got a few questions right off the bat. One, was it the when they when they did all these heart rate things? Was it done recently within the last like was it done a year before they actually came out with this? Well, this or this particular was first... one was done in 2020. They've updated it every year. So okay, so in 2020 they screened a bunch of people to watch this movie. Mm-hmm. What was the demographic? Was it a bunch of younger kids that hadn't seen the movie before? Or was it people that have seen the movie before and they just wanted to check their heart rate? Because if you've watched it previously, you know what's going to happen. So you're not going to have that spike in your heart rate. What I do know when it talks about it is that there were 250 people that they had watched the films. Yeah, but they don't have any like actual information on the I, background or anything like that because I think that would play a huge role. Yeah, I, I agree. And like I, we had mentioned before that when we talked about us watching it, like if Exorcist for me, and the, we'll we'll talk about this later, but I remember watching it when I was younger, scared the uh-huh. shit out of me. Like, yeah, but now and then you watch it now, yeah, not scary at all, it, not at all, and yeah. so. It, it was. It became more of a. Uh, th- let me ask you this: mm-hmm. Did the movie? It wasn't scary. It was more of the relationships or the character development within the story than it was the actual like demon inside the girl and the pro- the exorcism and stuff like that. Say it again. Like, what did it become more of the? You saw more of the character development within the movie than you did the actual, like the exorcist. Or the exorcism and the little girl being troubled. Yeah. I think yeah. now that was, you know, because for one, we've seen so many movies now, but I think, you know, vast experience, I guess you could say adds to like what, when you're watching, you're like, oh, okay. Now and you 
almost especially in my mind i analyze stuff a lot so i'm like sitting there just and i kind of nitpick at things more than i should Mm -hmm. um so uh from a standpoint of scaring me i always for one i've seen it so it's kind of hard to you know explain it today but if it was my first time seeing a movie i don't know what to expect going in especially when you're young now we've seen so many things you kind of know going in what to expect with all these movies it's like when we yeah, went there's when we talked about exorcist believer right um i don't think you were on that podcast mm-hmm. but watching that movie because we had seen the other three exorcist movies going into this one you knew what to expect from the movie so it didn't really scare there was no there it wasn't a new story or anything like that it It was was, just new people it was just a but yeah a rendition of the same exact thing mm -hmm. happening different i mean and and even in believer uh ellen bernston 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 was in this movie or in that movie so so (laughs) so i mean they they not only and linda blair actually spoiler if anybody hadn't seen it yet, but Linda Blair's in that movie as well. But um, for a very sure for a spot the, the casting, she wasn't. One. I think we talked about it, but, but I don't remember. I, can't if, remember I honestly sure. don't remember if we did. But yeah, that's what I was saying. I, during the premiere thing, we might not have because we try to do those a bit differently. But I thought we mentioned that she showed up, but I can't remember but, for sure. But I know um, what I normally talk about is I, I already mentioned the um, it was directed by William Friedkin, but it was based on a screenplay by William Peter Blatty, who wrote the novel. Oops, if you guys heard that. Uh, as I said earlier, the film stars Ellen Burstyn. Uh, Max von Sydow, Jason Miller, and Linda Blair, which I feel Linda Blair should have got more credit for this movie than I think she did. I know she's known for it, yeah. but I think she did better than they even kind of, because it was a horror movie, I don't think she got the notoriety for the to, movie. See, to me, this was no horror movie, but <laughs> like... <laughs> Okay, so I got to start. It was start more off. horror okay. than the last one we just watched. Well, yeah, I was. Just, I, I, would say. I get, I get that, but like, okay, so, but uh, what's it going? The first time I watched this was like I don't know, maybe ten years ago, and uh, of course we watched other movies like Nightmare Before Elm Street, and like a million other different horror movies that scared Night the shit out of me. Before <laughs> Elm Street? Or, you, you know, or Nightmare on. on. Nightmare on How Elm much Street. before? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, where was it? I combined Nightmare it? Before when? Christmas and Nightmare on Elm Street. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling me out. <laughs> I was trying to avoid it. Uh, Aaron got but, uh, to it before I did, because that's why I was yeah. laughing. Yeah, because of, I was all sitting there thinking about it afterwards. I was like, fuck, I fucked it up. But uh, what's it going? I watched worse movies than this one. And it just, when I first watched it, I was bored out of my mind. And I could see why people didn't like it or got scared of it back when it first came out. Because I think, didn't they say that people got grossed out and threw up and stuff during this film too? Like when yeah, it premiered? It was- it was almost revolutionary. Well, that's what I was saying. It it's like, there was nothing I like it. Well, I understood that part. But like when I watched it, other movies came out that were worse to me. So when I watched this, I was just bored. I'm shocked the first then, time you saw it was Even the second time I... Well, that's what I was saying. I di- and didn't ever remember watching it. I saw and people it. people would always talk about Linda Blair and all this shit. And, like, I was just like, I should watch it at one point. And I don't remember how, when I, like, why I watched it or whatever. I think I might have rented it from Blockbuster at the time. But, like, I, I just remember seeing it and was disappointed. And then I was like, oh, that was what the movie was? I thought it was way worse. Because, I mean, we watched, what was it, parody movies. I'm like, I think one of them was Scary Movie, I think. I can't remember if it was the first or the second one, but like they do the whole Linda Blair thing where they're making a joke about it, like throwing, 
Like I think Charlie Sheen was in it, uh, was part I, of it or something. But her head spins I, around. I or get some that, shit. Josh. But thinking about and what I'm getting at is thinking about when this movie was made. Like kind of what Aaron was saying. This thing was made in 1973. When she did mm-hmm. that crab walk down the fucking stairs. Yeah. I mean, not only that, but when her head basically flips around and she's sitting there, that stuff wasn't even done back then. And when I read about it, um, when they uh, they had difficulty casting the film because they cast unknowns. Like at the time, Burstyn, Blair, and Miller were not major stars. So oh, Warner okay, Brothers yeah. didn't even want to actually make the film. They drew opposition from Warner Brothers because that he was casting them. Yeah, I have yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah, and I mean, imagine reading off a script where all this stuff is happening in in a in a meeting, like proposing it to the yeah. <laughs> Warner Brothers or whatever. But, like that would that would be tough, especially. But the interesting then. part too is when. I look, I didn't realize, well, for one, the budget for this was 12 million. So the last movie, if you guys listened to when we talked about Hush, it was 1 million. This one was 12 million back in 1973. It was 1 million. Hush was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this one was 12 million back in 1973. So it was like, that's a, to me, that's a crazy amount of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was only released in twenty four theaters. Damn, really? Yeah, that's shock. Uh, that's like the shocking part. Yeah, was doing that probably uh, because it wasn't allowed in the Bible it. Belt or something. It was probably religious stuff that was stopping it from coming out. They don't want demons in the households and blah blah blah. Yeah, the reviews were mixed, but they sold out every show, and people were waiting in long lines even during cold weather to watch it. And then, um. I guess they booked into theaters under four wall distribution rental agreements. And it was the first time a major studio had done that. Um, and what you were talking about, Josh, yeah, some viewers uh, suffered physical reactions. Some fainted, some vomited. And then uh, the the main scene that they uh, were shocked by, and I kind of was too thinking about what they did back then, was the cerebral angio and geography that they did on Linda Blair at the time, all the medical stuff they were doing on. Oh, her. oh yeah. Like I remember when I saw that. Thinking I like, about oh, what yeah. you do now for stuff compared to then, because that is when you and that was just what sixty years ago. But the equipment they were using back then <laughs> to do yeah. stuff that you do now that's almost digital. It's like they literally put something in front of your face half the time and it does everything that this crazy stuff was doing. Now, the injections still happen today, like when they put dye in you to like check for stuff. But mm-hmm. um but uh C T scans and whatnot. But uh there was rumors they were gonna give this an X rating back then too. <laughs> Dang. Wow, dude. And no one would have saw yep. it. Yep. Yep. But uh, the crazy. ratings board accommodated the studio and gave it an R rating so they could uh, release it. <laughs> yeah, release it and recomp some but of But there were also well. several cities that attempted to ban it from even being f- shown back then. Yeah, uh, see, but at the end of the run... A, probably grossed, Bible Belt in the South a lot. Yeah, but at the end it grossed $193 million in the theater... And so it's made four hundred and forty one million over the its lifetime. So over sixty yeah. years it's yeah, made. because they've probably they've probably re released it a few times. But uh, one thing, like I said, it's interesting because it was the first horror film to be nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Um Yeah, and that's like and barely anything ever gets picked for Flatty won best <laughs> adapted screenplay for the movie. Um, the sound engineers took home best sound. Hmm. So, but that's where I was kind of mentioning at the beginning that I felt Linda Blair deserved more considering how young she was and how I felt she performed in the role. Pretty much. She like sold the movie though. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, when I you, mean, when you think about that, it, if she did not perform the role that the way she did, you don't even know if the movie would have been as good. 
Yeah. Well, that's why it seemed weird, so, though. I think that that's mostly what messed me up about the movie was the the pacing was weird. Like, I don't understand why they opened where, like... Well, I don't know the, if him I fully... getting the coins or whatever that in the, because they oh, opened yeah. up in uh, did they even say, uh, it say was Egypt? Well, the priest was doing archaeological on the... back in. Yeah, he was doing archaeological um, archaeological stuff, but like they didn't explain like why he was doing it, and it didn't seem like it fit with the story about her getting the demon in her and all that stuff. So That's like the... it felt weird to me, like that being the open for the movie and then it cut into like all the other stuff. I think it was just the 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 title of the movie is The Exorcist, right? Yeah. So they opened with you meeting the Exorcist and where he was in his Oh at journey. the time and where then, he was. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just a small snippet and snippet and then they actually began the story of well, I mean, you said that it was also the, off of a book or something, right? That it well, was adapted it was off William of Peter before. Blatty's novel. Yeah, he wrote the book. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's probably that's probably why it's a bit different anyway. Or, like, that's why they kept it. They probably kept it kind of close to the novel, I guess. Except that's that's <clears> the part that I always struggle with, and even in re-watching it, was why. I would have liked to have known why she was possessed. Like yeah, well, she was, exactly. well yeah. they they alluded to it a little bit in the movie whenever she was using the Ouija board, but it was like, uh, here's how here here's how I took it. Do you remember when the mom was asking, "Oh, how you do this?" Blah blah blah, and then she was actually saying that there was some. Uh, she spoke about or she referred to someone or something mm-hmm. at that point. At that point, she was already accepting of this. I guess that's um, true because I do remember around. her doing the Ouija thing with the mom, and mm-hmm. and yeah. so she was already talking to somebody. So I yeah, guess she was doing this alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like oh, it's better with two. I think the mom said it's better with two people. Yeah, but she was like, oh, but it were it works just fine when you're alone. So she was already she opened that door yeah. alone, and she became possessed beyond that point yeah. that was why i guess that's 100 percent. that was why yeah but yeah i mean when you well, think about the stuff that they did in this movie the stuff that now this was a creepy I, movie oh. even today when i watched it again it was a creepy movie so like the just the stuff that she not only like i was talking about the hospital stuff but like the stuff that Reagan was doing to herself when she was possessed. And, oh yeah, <laughs> and the, it just and then the voices too. Well, yeah, but like I mean, the... thinking about it, it's, she's a twelve. She was twelve, right? Twelve or thirteen. So you, if yeah. you just think of if it's your daughter that is doing all this shit, and then you're walking in a room and she's stabbing herself with a crucifix and and her, you know. Uh, genital region, and mm-hmm. um, you know, again, not only that, her tur- head turning around backwards would freak most people out if that happened. <laughs> if <you're... laughs> yeah, but but uh, then you know the vomiting thing. That's you know that didn't creep me out. I mean, I can envision, and again, I can think it's because we've seen so movies now that are so damn bloody and so gross that vomit today. Well, you see vomit in just regular movies now. And uh Yeah. Um and then speaking in tongues, that's just known as a thing that happens, but um but yeah, I mean the whole thing was just you know, the different scenarios like when uh the various people died. And you can kind of see we've talked about the nun in the past and the nun two on this podcast and you can see where those movies have gotten inspiration from this movie when you watch this one because they've kind of repeated stuff and how you and i I guess i'm talking about the religious factor of the possessed or the the killing the 
the religious figures, let's say. Mm-hmm. So, because that happened in this one, and I will swallow that. Like, like killing do, of religious figures? What do you? Well, when the priest throws himself down the stairs at the end, or, you know. I, w- I wouldn't say that's a killing of a religious figure. That was more martyrdom than anything. Yeah. That, that wasn't them being murdered because of a demon or anything like that. He yeah, was keeping the little girl himself to exactly, save the girl in order to save her. So mm-hmm. it's like it, it wasn't like a they murdered him off or anything like that. Oh, and, what and I mean that, is that's one thing I really liked about this movie yeah. mm-hmm. was that there were a lot of things under the covers that they were like trying trying to say. One the 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 stuff with the Ouija board. You know, be beware of letting to certain entities into your life. Mm-hmm. To religion, the the uh, whole premise behind her, she's an actress. She doesn't believe in in God. Well, at least that's what they alluded to. She was very. Mm-hmm. It was more like she was ignorant of it. Mm-hmm. So she went the science route to try and get help for her daughter. Mm-hmm. That they were pointing every which way, like away from that. And then finally, a doctor who's probably probably religious mentions this after how long? Yeah, and then. Yeah, it could probably be months and months and months, yeah. yeah. The the relationship with the priest that she initially talks to and his relationship with faith and how he's in a he's in a state to where he's he's on the cusp of not believing anymore. So he's in this burden between it. And then he, in order to regain his faith, he uh meets these people. Mm-hmm. And then the the actual exorcist comes in so it's more like his his i i could go on for for i I, I really like the story and it's funny that you guys mentioned it earlier that oh you haven't haven't watched until 10 years ago i realized as i'm watching this movie i'm like i've i've never watched this yeah (laughs) like but i grew up knowing the story of the exorcist But then watching it, I was like, this is a completely different movie than what I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking at it from the scope of an almost 40-something-year-old man that's, you know, been through life and everything else. Well, and that's what I so was alluding like, to earlier was our experiences have changed the way we watch these films. Oh, it's for like sure. back when we were yeah. younger, we don't have any experiences to base that on. So when we yeah. see him oh, as yeah. a young kid, it's the same thing with all these movies, pretty much most of them, you know, the older ones that we're going to talk about even Nightmare on Elm Street that we'll be talking about in, at number, what is it? I think it's 13, 16 or 15. Number 13. Yeah, those, oh, okay. those ones are just fun, man. I don't mean to judge. Those, those are fun yeah. horror movies. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's no delving into character development with those movies. It's no, yeah. Like, the next few, after we hit 28 Days Later next, will be all the older ones. So yeah, we'll hit Texas yeah. Chainsaw well, Massacre. That's going to be great. Yeah, because I haven't watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so I've been waiting for us to get to that one. Yeah, we'll be watching that one at number 15, Halloween at number 14, and Nightmare on Elm Street at number 13. So it's going to be all the, Mm -hmm. pretty much the ones that... Oh, so all the good ones. Yeah, yeah. that all started after this one, that just continued the horror genre are coming up. And then we got 28 days later in between. I I would also say as far as like... There have been a couple on this list that were just really good as far as mm-hmm. like well written stories, mm-hmm. but I can see since this was a novel, like this was a really well written, like there was reasons behind everything that was happening mm-hmm. with their characters, with everything. Like it, it was it was very well thought out. Mm-hmm. So. And they, of course, they're going to cherry pick from a novel because it it was how long? It was a uh, hundred twenty minutes. Yeah, the movie. Um, it was yeah, hundred twenty two. Yeah, minutes, two hours yeah. and two. Yeah, so like, there's only so much of a novel that you're going to be able to fit in a two hour movie. But it was it was definitely that's probably a lot that they cut out was the the beginning yeah. time of him being in the ar- 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 archaeological dig site and them going into detail about the like, demons and all this other stuff while the director's cut so that's the one i watched um oh. so um it's a little different i'd have you. to watch the theatrical version to see what the difference was 
at this point but i but yeah i I don't even remember how long the director's cut was compared to what the theatrical version was but Mm. um usually you get like an extra 20 or 30 minutes in director's cut yeah so um it's great movie though it wasn't Mm -hmm. like i said watching it now was i scared as much as i was then no but i can say the same thing for nightmare on elm street that we're going to talk about in a few podcasts from now um yeah i'm gonna re-watch it again because i love the movie um yeah but i don't um, know if horror movies have the same effect anymore but i can tell you what i don't know if i've ever seen texas chainsaw massacre though that's one that i don't know if i've ever seen all the way through i remember seeing some of what was it i think it was summer school where they talk about it and the Thing where they talk about how good Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, and they play parts of it in the movie. And the original every, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, like because they talk about it in that movie, and I remember, uh, and he was like, "Oh, it's so good," blah blah blah. And they show like it's mostly the most iconic scene is like the Leatherface just swinging the chainsaw around, like dancing in the truck that. and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that's one of the scenes that they show in it, but I just remember that I was like, oh, I should watch this movie sometime. Just never have. So it's like, I'm ready to, and I've been mostly waiting now just to do it on the podcast. To It's like, same with Halloween. I don't remember the last time I watched the original Halloween. I know I've seen a lot of the other ones, like, <laughs> like, Whenever it came on cable or whatever, mostly the newer ones like H2O and I think the one with Buster Rhymes in it. I can't remember the name of the that one. Resurrection? <clears throat> but Oh, Resurrection, yeah. So it's most of the newer ones, but still, I haven't watched like the first one in a long time. <clears throat> One thing, one other thing I wanted to point out was in 2010, this mo- the Library of Congress selected the film for pres- preservation in uh, the National Film Registry. So it's considered one of the best. Um, preservation. What does that mean? That means that they save the They'll film save that the it was film. printed on. So it's yeah, like, that way. New- yeah, it's like they ca- save they the consider it film from whom. Like, from I guess uh, being and yeah from being deteriorated and, and you lose so it. it was put in a hermetically sealed box. I have no idea, man. That I'm I have not looked <laughs> into. I just yeah. know. I just are know they that putting they... it in what? What is it? What is it called when they put a box in the ground and then a don't time open capsule? it until twenty? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did they put it in a time capsule <laughs> to be opened a thousand years from now? I fucking hope not. <laughs> I don't think it's I would gonna hope be like that. that this is the representation of oh, this was the 1900s. <laughs> what the fuck yeah. are we watching? We <laughs> <laughs> oh, got people's heads spinning around. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? Green, <laughs> it's spitting stuff on people. My God, <laughs> I would surely hope. But yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look into. I just know that we'd have to look at how many. There's a bunch on there, though. A lot of the older stuff, like crazy old. Yeah, it's probably like Casablanca is in there, and like uh, probably Terminator and, to, and Judgment Day, probably too. Yeah, I don't want to go through Judgment them all, Day but there's a ton of it. Uh, I'm well. It's like anything that's relevant where they like. Uh, consider it. I think we talked about the Alien was one or something, right? Relevant. I thought. Yeah, they're historically relevant movies. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like uh, Josh said, Aliens on there, but then there's a bunch of different ones. I mean, is it one per decade or is it one every? No, I think they just whenever they feel. I think yeah, they've only been doing it since 1988, but I mean, there's movies all the way back from. 1891 in there so like so pretty much the preservation thing is like in yeah you know, kissing ass of the <laughs> whoever made the film uh possibly but I mean, half probably. of these people probably it's aren't just even alive anymore hollywood studios let's make a preservation event to you know give another award out to 
egocentric people. I mean, there's stuff in there like uh, <laughs> President McKinley's inauguration. I'm, footage, I'm right? sorry. I, 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 it's, it's, it's just in me to troll. It's just, it's just in me. You know, I can't help it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's movies f- far, far back in there. But anyhow, um, I don't know if you guys, did you guys have anything else to say about this one? Um, cause I didn't really, I, I, watching the movie, I'd still watch it again. I wouldn't be scared of the movie. It would be one of those movies. I'd go, Hey, this was one of the, I would consider it on the forefront of horror films, you know, before they, you know, the genre was yeah. even there. I would think, I think if somebody wasn't telling me like it was their, like I would have had a different picture in mind if somebody wasn't saying it. Because I heard from a bunch of people that they were saying, oh, I'm so scared by this movie and stuff like that. That's what ruined the, I don't know, the movie for me in a way. Because, like, I was expecting a lo- so much out of it, and then it just didn't hit what I was expecting, I guess. Which happens sometimes, I mean, with other movies and stuff like that. Especially uh, movies that have came out recently. Kind of just like you're expecting too much, at, or like even TV shows. Well, that's the luxury I had of being older than <clears throat> you guys and seeing it years ago. Yeah, like I saw, seen it. It was before, one of my yeah. first horror movies that I saw. So, in my mind, I remember how scared I got. Same thing with Nightmare on Elm Street when I saw that originally, and we've yeah. talked about that yeah. on previous podcasts. Me and Aaron did, um, but. um but yeah, so that's where the difference lies now. The type of horror movies that would have to scare me now are a different type of horror. And yeah. you'll see that when we get up into numbers, you know, into the top numbers. Because the the one that is number one freaks me out to this day. Every time I watch it. So And do you know what here here's the great thing is I have yet to see this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of them so are when I watch it, it's watch gonna it. be one that's gonna be like holy I'm hoping yeah. that I'm just like, holy shit. It freaks me out to this day. Every time yeah. I see it. Insidious. I've never seen person. Insidious. So, Oh yeah. No, that one, that so, one's good. So that one's good. Yeah. I've only seen like one bit of Insidious. The first one. Yeah. I'll just say like, that's number two. Oh, so yeah. I'm the, I'm the only one that's watched Insidious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I remember. I'm the only one that uh, hasn't like, seen the other one. I remember somebody watching it and I saw one bit and then I was like, fuck this. And I just went <laughs> to watch TV. I was like, fuck that movie. It ain't that bad, man. <laughs> like, it ain't, it ain't no, that no, scary. No, like, it, it just was creepy. The one part that I did see all, out of it. Know, and then I just I know, didn't watch here, it after that. It's not technically a spoiler, but when you watch. Watch the movie. The big thing with that is, is they used audio to their horror advantage. Big time. Like, it draws you in. It makes you anticipate things. And it, it did a really good job audio-wise. Well, so. we talked about that when we talked about Annabelle Comes Home. That that was one of the best things that, yeah, we, that, that they did in that movie. Smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, Smile was another one, too, for me, at least. But, yeah, so... The- it made me unsettled. So but, yeah. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, podcast where we talked about the exorcist. Um, as we mentioned previously, the next podcast, these will be coming out every Friday. So um, the next podcast will be coming next Friday. It'll be the uh, movie. Uh, it'll be number 16 on the list. It'll be 28 days later. So going a little bit off, kil- you know, not necessarily off kilter, but a totally different, this one's kind of, zombie slash infected type horror versus what we've kind of done in the past is, is this the first, first zombie movie that we've done on the podcast I th- maybe i think so i think we've I mean, talked about them on sci-fi graveyard. i should say yeah, that's why i said yeah, zombie I slash infected type but but um but yeah we'll be doing that yeah. next week on on this podcast and then following that up it'll be the 1974 horror classic texas chainsaw massacre so um (laughs) but for all of us here at the heart of geek i hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode of uh, scream creeps and check out our uh, website and our youtube channel for all of our other content so 
we've got streams that we co- we we do every Saturday uh, currently. We're probably going to be adding a little. I'm probably going to be adding a few more. Uh, mm-hmm. But we're streaming Call we're of streaming Duty. Call of Duty on, on Saturdays. Saturdays. Uh, uh, what, what's your page? The Hardy Geek page uh, or our page? The Hardy Geek page uh, at Twitch.com. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Heart of Geek. There we go. Um, and then just look up Aaron Christopher TV on Twitch. Uh, I'm going to be streaming that with the, the Heart of Geek stuff. And then, yeah, and then I'm also a, I'm mine actually is gonna, Rockified Fatty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the next geeky thing I'm going to do, my, my new PC is actually going to be coming out. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about having a live stream to where I'm building this thing. And then... Yeah. Either that or just making a video. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think. Uh, visit all the stuff. Become a, a geeky person like the rest of us. And then, uh, yeah, we'll say, hey, I love you. Bye. Yep. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you in the next episode for 28 Days Later. Have a good night. <laughs>